Welcome to the NGIT website and math podcast. My name is Vanessa and today I'll be covering positive and negative integer exponents. This tutorial is basically just to go over um, the relationship between the base number and both po and an exponent that's both either positive or negative. Let's go over the positive integer exponents first. Positive integer exponent just simply means that you have some num some real number raised to an, an exponent that is positive. Always keep in mind that 1, a to the first, is always a, or the, any number raised to the power of 1 is the number itself. So let's just do a few examples. So if we had 5 raised to the third, that's simply 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125. Now the important part to remember with positive and negative integer exponents is when you have a negative no when you have a negative base number the parentheses are make a, make, a, make a major difference to your answer. So first of all, if you have let's say negative 3 squared, that negative is is involved with 3 and is affected by the exponent because it's in that parentheses. So this can be rewritten as negative 3 times a negative 3, which is positive 9. Now if we were to either rewrite it as this, just negative 3 squared, or sometimes it's written as 3 and with the negative, with the 3 like this, but most of the time it's, sh it's shown like this. What this does is it it represents the negative has nothing to do with the exponent. It's completely unaffected. So what it actually does is it's just 3 times 3, like that, which actually just gives us negative 9 instead of positive 9. Though this is very important to remember because when you're doing negative um, integer exponents, the same rule applies. But, it's also, but again, it's very important to decipher whether the negative is affected or unaffected by the exponent. So the parentheses tell you if the if the negative is in the parentheses, then you apply the exponent, apply it to the exponent. If it's outside of the parentheses or if there's no parentheses written, that usually indicates that the negative is unaffected by the exponent. So now let's dive into a negative integer exponent. It's the same kind of concept except the exponent is a negative number in which case it's better to rewrite the expression using a fraction by making putting it underneath the 1 and that makes the exponent positive again and then you can just write 1 over and the same rules would apply as if it were a positive integer exponent. So let's do a few examples. Say we had a negative 5 raised to a negative 2. First things first is you want to take apply the, the rule that we just uh, described and put it over 1. So we're going to write 1 over negative 5 and now because it's, it's underneath the 1 this becomes a positive. Now the denominator can be treated as a positive integer exponent because the exponent is now positive. And don't forget, the, in this case, the negative is inside parentheses, which means that the negative has to, go, has to be affected by the exponent. So if we rewrite this, then this just becomes 1 over negative 5 times negative 5, which is equal to 1 over 25. So if we did the same thing, except that we're, now we're, let's say, negative 5 raised to the negative 2. Same idea. First, be address the negative exponent first. So it's going to be 1 over negative 5, now raised to the 2 because we've turned it into a, a fraction. Now, because in this case there's no parentheses present around the negative 5, the negative is completely separate from the exponent and should be completely, completely pulled out of the fraction so there's no confusion. 
So this can be rewritten as 1, 5 squared, which is negative 1 over 5 times 5, which is equal to negative 1 over 25. Okay, now we'll do one more example, except now we're going to be dealing with a fraction from the, from the beginning. So say if we had the example 2 over 3 raised to the minus 3. Okay, so now because it's already a fraction, we don't necessarily have to do 1 over, but the inverse is just simply flipping it. So we're going to flip this and make it 3 over 2 raised to the positive 3. So we just simply flipped it, and because we flipped it, we now make the exponent positive. So now, if we recall our rules of exponents, that 3 can be specifically tagged onto each number in the numerator and the denominator separately to make it easier to solve. So this just becomes 3 raised to the third over 2 raised to the third. And we could do this individually. So 3 to the third is 3 times 3 times 3 over 2 to the third, which is 2 times 2 times 2. And that equals, on the top, we get 27. And on the bottom, we get 8. And there's our final answer for that. So thank you for visiting the NGIT website. If you need any further assistance, please feel free to stop by the CAPE or the Center for Academic and Professional Enrichment located in Kupfrin Hall, room 200. Good luck in your studies.